Hello and welcome to this video on discrete time signals and how to compute the energy and or the power in a discrete time signal. So um, most of this video will be going through four examples uh, of computing the energy or power for the x of n's that are listed on this uh, on the screen. Uh, just to remind you the energy is the sum of the magnitude squared of the signal uh, over all possible values of n. And we use magnitude squared here in case the signal is complex. If the signal is real, then this is the same as the sum of the squared value of the signal. Uh, the reason we call this energy is that if you look at electrical circuits, uh, energy and power are proportional at least in a uh, dissipated in a resistor are proportional to the voltage squared and to the current squared. And so uh, we've generalized that to say well the energy and the power in a signal are uh, is given by the uh, total squared value for energy or the average squared value for power. So without talking about it much more, let's actually start uh, working through the examples and that will illustrate how we apply these formulas and it will illustrate some things about uh, the relationship between energy and power and such. So our first signal will be uh, x of n is the unit step function. So we'll bring up the graph here. So this is x of n is the unit step function and you can see that the unit step function is 0 until n gets to be 0 and then it's 1. So um, the energy is going to be the sum from n going from minus infinity to infinity of the magnitude squared of xn. Okay, now when n is less than 0, then x of n is 0 and the magnitude squared is 0. So um, because the summation terms uh, for n less than 0 are 0, I can rewrite this as a sum from n going from 0 to infinity because again all of the terms where n is less than 0 add 0 to my sum. Now when n is between 0 and infinity x of n, uh, this guy up here, is equal to 1 and 1 squared is equal to 1 so basically what I have then is the summation n going from 0 to infinity of 1. Okay, so if I take 1 and add it, you know, if, if when n is equal to 0, I have 1. When n is equal to 1, I have 1, so I add that to the previous one. And now I've got 2. When n is equal to 2, I add 1, so I've got 3, and so on. And as n gets bigger, the sum is going to continue to get bigger. And so if I go from 0 to infinity, the sum is going to be infinite. It's going to get, um, it, it will get to be so large, uh, yeah, I mean, it just never stops growing as n gets big. So this is a signal with infinite energy. Now it turns out that uh, we can also compute the average power and so let's oops, let's see if we can actually get our tools to do that. The average power P is the limit as cap n goes to infinity 1 over 2n plus 1 summation n going from minus n up to cap n of the magnitude squared x of n. Okay, and to see what this is going to look like, let's just go through a couple of different values of n. So um, let's do the simplest possible case. Let's suppose n is equal to 0. Okay then um, I'll call this P0, I guess. Um, P0 is going to be 1 over 2n 
n is equal to 0, so it's just going to be 1 over 1. And when n is 0, basically when cap n is 0, then my little n is going to go from 0 to 0. So I'll just have one term. This is going to be x of 0 magnitude squared. And x of 0 is 1. So I have 1 divided by 1 times 1. So I just have 1. Let's see what happens when n is equal to 1. And in fact, this is going to be so exciting that we'll do it in a different color. OK, when n is equal to 1, I have p1. And let's see, this is going to be 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1. So this is going to be 1 over 3. The summation from of little n going from minus n, so this will be minus 1 up to 1 of x n magnitude squared. OK, so when little n is minus 1, this term is going to be 0. When little n is 0 or 1, this term is going to be 1 squared, which is 1. So I'm going to have basically 1 plus 1, which will correspond to a little n of 0 and 1. And this gives me then 2 thirds. OK, so you might be able to see a pattern here. Let's do another one just to see. n is equal to 2. I'll have p2 be 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 plus 1, so 1 fifth. And now I'm going to sum from n going from minus 2 to 2, magnitude of x n squared. And so when little n is negative 2 or negative 1, I'll have 0 here. When little n is 0, 1, or 2, I'll have 1 that I'm summing. And so I'll have three terms of 1. I multiply that by 1 fifth. And so I get 3 fifths. OK. So the pattern that hopefully you're beginning to see here, and we'll clear off a little bit of space for this, is that um, what I've been calling p superscript cap n, which is the 1 over 2n plus 1 summation term, this is going to end up being uh, 1 over 2n plus 1. And then as I, I have little n go from minus n to cap n, I'll end up with cap n plus 1 terms. OK, so when n was 0, I had one term here that gave me a 1. When n is 1, I had two terms here, which gave me this 2. When n is 2, I had three terms here, which gave me this 3. So I can write this then as um, n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. OK. And now I want to take the limit of this as n goes to infinity. Well, there's a lot of different ways to think about this. Um, one way that to me makes the most sense, but your mileage may vary, is if I divide top and bottom here by n, then I can get that this is 1 plus 1 over n over 2 plus 1 over n. And now I want to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, as n goes to infinity, the 1 over n terms go to 0, right? As n gets big, 1 over n gets close to 0. So this goes to 0. So I have then the limit as cap n goes to infinity of this piece of n is 1 half. OK, so to summarize, we're basically done now with the unit step function. We found that its energy is infinite, but that its average power is 1 half. Now, this may seem to be a little strange to you because with the unit step function, it turns out that the power is all distributed in the part of the signal that occurs after 
uh, n is equal to 0. Okay, But because I'm averaging over, um, over both the negative values for n and the positive values for n, I get an average power of 1 half. Okay, so hopefully uh, this has made sense. Let's go back and look at our list. Okay, we've done this guy. And uh, let's go ahead and do the next one. It looks like we probably have time for that. Okay, this is a graph of x of n is 1 half to the n times u of n. Okay, the multiplying by u of n here just basically makes sure that x of n is 0 whenever n is less than 0. So basically what I have is a signal that's 0 until I get to 0, then it has a value of 1. The next term is 1 half to the 1, which is 1 half, 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth, and so on. So to find its energy, this is going to be the sum of little n, and I'm going to write this going from 0 to infinity. The reason I'm not going to start at negative infinity is all of the terms down here for n less than 0 are 0. So I'm going to have n going from 0 to infinity, the magnitude of x n squared. Now, the magnitude of this thing is just going to be 1 half to the n, and then I'm going to square that. So that's what this, what this term is going to be. And uh, 1 half to the n squared, that's the same as 1 half to the 2n, because if I take 1 half to the n, square it, it's like multiplying by 2. But I can also write this as 1 half squared, and then that is raised to the nth power, and 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Okay, why did I do that? Well, I can now say that the energy is the summation n going from 0 to infinity of 1 fourth raised to the nth power. Okay, this is a geometric series. And it turns out that the sum, n going from 0 to infinity, is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 fourth. Okay, this, uh, this is the ratio that I'm summing, and this is a result um, that uh, will be available in another video. It turns out you have to do this sort of thing quite often when you're dealing with um, discrete time systems. And so when I work this out, then I get that the energy is 4 thirds. Okay, so even though this is a signal that never goes completely to zero as n gets big, it gets small enough fast enough that it does have a finite energy, which turns out to be 4 thirds. If the energy is finite, that means that the power which is the average over from minus infinity up to plus infinity of these terms, uh, essentially, well, it's the average of these guys, the power is going to be zero because um, when I, essentially what it would, to have a, a non-zero power would require that I have this four thirds and that I'm able to spread that out over an infinite number of terms, which I can't. If I'm going to have a non-zero power, my energy has to be infinite. Okay, well, we got through two of the examples. Um, in part two, we'll go through the other two examples. Thanks, and stay tuned for part two.